the expected result uh, should be something like this. Okay, so we have uh, on top of the the app uh, icon, React icon, and then we have a list of cards. Okay, basically two by or like four by two. Okay, so two columns for rows, and the first eight different uh, uh, what PNGs or icons for eight different programming languages. And every time when we click, so we can also display their specific uh, characteristics or whatever the text that belongs to them. Okay. So again, we do them. Have you guys uh, tried to like uh, to look at before coming this class? Anyone tried? Oh, I took a look, but I didn't really do anything. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it together, everything from scratch. <clears throat> so it looks like, yeah, we need the data, right? Uh, some kind of data. So how many data we need? We need at least like eight uh, objects or eight elements inside an array, okay? Showing us those texts like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Python. And then we need also eight different uh, images for them, okay? and some uh, functionalities later on once we end up uh, building this ui what we can do is let's say when we uh, click uh, we can we have also somehow replaced the existing png or existing image with its uh, own content okay so when we click when we click back we have to again toggle back to uh, image okay so every time when we click that content and then talk, uh, the image is toggled. And also there are some effects like hovering and so on. Those are just the CSS. Other than that, um, looks like, yeah, really interesting. Let's get, let's get it done. So how can we start uh, when we have an, a, let's say array of objects, look at this. For example, we have this kind of data, right? Say that this is our array and then we have um, objects inside. I'll make it a little bigger. I don't want this one anymore. Let's say that we have name, okay? And then let's say uh, you'll be, and we have uh, ID for uh, you'll be, let's say one, okay? And then I want a couple of those. Let me quickly put it and then create some more. Let me put here um, John, and then let's say Jake, and then Samira, and let's say put here Emirhan. Okay, and different IDs two, three, four, five. So, how can we show them in a more dynamic way? Uh, actually, we can also uh, what display them in a hard coded way. For example, we have one common uh, wrapper, and then inside we can put like different uh, as many as the length of the what data. So, we have we can put uh, well, you know, multiple H ones, as many as the length of data. So here, how many? Okay, five. Okay, we can put here one, two, three, four, five, right? And then just we can put here what? Uh, since the uh, content is coming from variable, so we can put here data and then zero, and the name for the first one, right? And then data, and then one. And then that name, okay. So I can remove this. And again, let me just put here and update their indexes. So it's gonna be two, three, and finally four. Kind of this one is confused. And let me remove this. Yeah, this is one way how to display the list of names over here, okay? But is it a solution? No. It's just a manually, uh, you know, temporary solution. When you have really like short amount of data, but what if you have uh, hundreds, thousands of list of items? Are we gonna do the same all the way here? No, of course. So we can make it automatically mapped somehow, right? Let's see first this one, and we're gonna have those names over here on the UI. So where's my UI? Is down below here. Okay. Are you be John, Jake, Zamira, Emerhan? Yeah. Now we have more smart solution with higher order function 
which is a uh, what mapping okay so when when we map uh, it creates this uh, whatever jsx or whatever html element we want automatically for us without writing them uh, in a, in this repeated order uh, let me uh, show you very simple element here constant let's say numbers and equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. So how can we show them in a more dynamic way is let's remove this. So just by mapping, right? So map, what is that? Numbers, okay, numbers that map. And then simply let's put here an argument, okay, uh, for this uh, map that iterates over every single element. If you remember the mapping in higher order function takes another function. So we can give here one function, okay? And then let's say that I, okay? But uh, the best practice is all the time using not this kind of function, but the arrow function, okay? Fat arrow. So let's say here, uh, what number? And then fat arrow. And I will use this number as a content for my JSX as a content. So the number becomes in my first loop one next loop number becomes two and the next loop number becomes three and every time i will benefit from these values to create a new what element okay what kind of element it can be anything like p let's say and then put here just number okay put here number the numbers is being mapped at the moment and this is my iterator and that one picks the one by one as many as elements I have in my numbers, and then will be displayed as a content inside my HTML element. Okay, let's have a look now. We will have all those numbers here. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is how map works uh, in a very smart way rather than doing in a repetitive way. Okay, so if we have like multiple, um, like JSX. Uh, lines in our React. So let's see inside the map. So we can go down in this case. Okay, let me cut this one and then go down. And we have to return them. For example, if you want to wrap inside a div, okay, and then put here, for example, okay, go ahead and then return div and then p and the number. Okay, so we can make it h1 and then let's make it h1 or ul. We can also make actually, yeah, let's make it ul. Okay, UL, and I put here a lie. So what is, uh, what, what kind of uh, task this part is doing is same as UL and then LI like this, numbers zero, and then numbers one, two, three, four, and so on and so on, okay? So this part is exactly doing this one. Okay, so if we have here 100 elements, so we have to go in this second approach, 100 lines, right? But using the first approach, that's the only one time and all the, all the time uh, it becomes, you know, scalable. Even for one element, you will map even 100 for even 1000, even million other elements, you will use the same uh, logic. Okay, so in this case, we can remove this, but uh, how, this code running behind scenes is exactly this way. Okay. Any questions at the moment? Yeah, look at this. The array variable that is being mapped and then higher order function and inside the func uh, map, never forget that returning a, an a, what, a element. So whatever you want to return, okay, li you will. But of course, UL, every time we don't want to return UL, okay? We can put this before map up here. And we want to return every time LI only, not UL, okay? So, you, so that's only one time, but LI is as many as the length of the numbers. So let's have a look. Yep, we have even in this uh, unordered bullet points. This is the way how we can map, right? Any questions?
no question, right? So based on the project, we have a data. Let's start mapping that data first, and then uh, try to make as similar as possible uh, for this project requirements, okay? So how many data we are expecting here? It looks like eight data, right? And then the design is uh, what, uh, based on CSS and HTML logic, we will make it as if it looks like uh, two columns and then four rows. Okay? But we need like kind of eight uh, objects inside an array so we can map it and show this way. Uh, let me grab the data. I think you also have that same data from assets and then data JS. Go ahead and grab this one. So categories. All right, save it. So um, if I have a data, I have like multiple options. I can put uh, before my function even. Okay, look at this. Okay, categories. In this case, I don't want to export. I mean, I don't need to export. And just uh, with a variable name, that's enough. And another option is I can put over here as well. Okay, so still uh, can be used. And I can remove this, for example, let me just put here. Okay, I can also put here in my app. But the downside of putting the data in your app is uh, it just, uh, you see, uh, like uh, somehow blows up your app component with uh, you know bunch of lines, which is really really not necessary. So it should be separated, or it can be separated in different, uh, completely separate individual file from where we can import. Okay, rather than putting over here, but it still works. So it's good to know. And then let me remove from here as well and create another file called data, data.js, and then put over here. Okay, so export constant categories. So is it data? No. Data.js. Okay, let's save it. Now look at the data. Um, exactly the same as we have been practicing over here like array of elements, array of objects. And here the same array of what objects, how many objects there are. So there should be eight, right? According to the UI. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it, okay? So we will be using like different properties over here to display on our, uh, on our site, okay? So it looks like this image, uh, this, this, these are what, the variables? This also needs to be imported. Okay, these are also variables. Uh, image, we can also put uh, before the uh, array, okay? But look at the object, how it looks like. It has name property, image property, and then options. Options has another array of elements or array of strings, okay? So looks like what we're gonna do is we will display first the text itself, alongside with its image. And then when we click, we will just hide this image and the text, but we will show only these uh, options, okay? Look at this. For example, when you click PHP, it shows us backend 995 and then Erasmus learned of. And here in the, under PHP, we have such information. So we have PHP and an image, but when we click, we will hide this image and PHP, but show only this backend 1995 and Erasmus learned Okay, so first, first thing is first, let's just map this name, how it looks like. And then we will implement the image next to name. And then we will implement step-by-step step, then the, the what second part of the logic is clicking. Okay, so, but these are at the moment are undefined, looks like, you see, not defined it even JavaScript because these are variables. So we can put here the variables like this. So, uh, I can create here quickly the folder that holds the images, okay, images. And then let's put inside all the images that we have in our assets, okay? 
So let me check all the images and then pull it out if I can download them. All right, so now I have all those images ready. Uh, I can just pull them out from downloads. My downloads. So it's coder.microsoft edge. Yak, I save it. Except this one, control C. And second app, I created here what image folder, right? Okay, I can put them all over here. So we have C++, CSS, Go, HTML, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, React. Not sure why this React, I will have a look later, but there should be eight PNGs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So, and then in our VS Code, they're all now available from now on, so, okay? Yep. So instead of this JavaScript, uh, when we use this image, we should be able to get this image. Okay, we should be able to. And we, we have multiple options. How we can put is, uh, we can uh, directly link here, this one, or we can import as a variable name and then just uh, refer here with using that variable. Okay, so in that one is simply import uh, initially, let's say CPP, what from its location, where it's located is images first. And then from image, we're gonna go to CPP PNG. Okay, now CPP becomes this PNG when we use this image property. Oh, where is that CPP? Yep, when, you, when we call with this image, uh, I mean this property, object property, that CPP shows us this image. Like that, okay, it's gonna show this one. And we will do the same for others. Um, next one is CSS. CSS from CSS PNG. And then we have what, go, and then go PNG. And uh, then HTML, HTML. HTML, PNG, and next the Java, Java from Java, PNG, and then JavaScript, simply JavaScript, PNG, and we have PHP from PHP. Uh, finally, we do have Python, right? Python and Python PHP, PNG. So these are also a uh, variable you can put here, whatever you want. It could be, let's say John, but when you wanna refer to Python, then you have to use this John, okay? Here it should be John then. So it would refer to this Python image, which is this icon. But let's put its own name. All right, let's save it and save it. Now I will remove all of those, okay? And what I would like to do is, for example, we can store uh, or we don't need to store. So we have also import here all the data, whatever we, is under the variable name, which is categories, right? So let's import that categories. So since this is exported not as default, so we can structure and then put here categories. Uh, from where? Um, from data, okay? Data. So now let's try to console this one, how it looks like console.log categories. But since we don't have numbers, okay, um, so let me just remove this. We will not be using this logic anymore. We will be using different, but I will just put here, hello, okay? So let's have a look. These categories 
should show us um, array of objects with these properties name javascript image javascript image and an options array of string okay so let's jump into our ui uh, ui so we have hello only at the moment and then inspect console is showing indeed all the array objects okay so and an image instead of uh, what variables it is replaced with its original uh, what value for that image so when we uh, use this one it's going to show us yeah it's uh, like as if it's in a png or image okay make sense any questions how we import it simply yeah we don't uh, we won't use any more this file okay we just import it and then uh test it that it is available now is everything clear Samira yes everything is clear okay awesome now, um, next task is how we can show this the text on the UI, this HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, Java. So anyone wants to help me here? You want to show us a map? Yeah, map, and then the curly brace syntax, right? What, we, what are Categories we going to map? That map. Categories that map. And then uh, uh, parentheses. Yeah, let's say uh, that uh, we can put HM here language. Okay, we can put in language because uh, they, yeah, and we will go down. Okay, and anyway, we're gonna have some multiple JSX later on, so we can go down, it's better, and then wrap it here. So if I wanna show only element, uh, I mean, on the name, oh, I could have, yeah, I could have done here what? Uh, just let's say here, um, li, okay. Yep, li, and then what should I put here? A uh, curly braces in a uh, okay, language. Language is that enough? Uh, what do you want to show the text and that? Yeah, text or whatever? just text, just text. That text. Mm -hmm. No language. Language dot what? Is it is it name text or no? Oh, yeah, name. 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 Okay, name. language that name. Okay, so if we go and then put here name, we will end up having list of programming okay. languages. But since this is a list, so we can wrap it with UL. Okay, so UL, and then and our map generates eight different allies inside this single UL wrapper. Okay, right, that's it. JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Python, Java, C++, Go, and then PHP. Cool. And next step is to create a card, okay, that wraps every single programming language name. And then later on, we will also put next to name the image content, okay? So how can we make it wrap? Uh, from now on, we can start working with uh, CSS also. Let's import the CSS, which is app CSS, but at the moment, app CSS is completely empty, right? So let's create some rules for this one. So um, for removing the, those bullet points, if you remember from uh, CSS, what was that? Li, right? Li, um, you remember the select says selector. Um, okay, we will remove all the bullet points from a lie. Was install type? Hmm. What Next was that? Decoration. Next decoration list. none. No. List no, style type. Good. List style type. Okay, list style type none. Okay, save it. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any more. Cool. Now, um, this li definitely will not be alone so it's better to 
put it down, later on we will have other elements next to the align. So that's why we can uh, go down and then create here uh, one uh, wrapper first, okay? And then put here a lie. Because anyway, we're gonna have here image also, right? Something like this. Yep, cool. And let's create for this div. So this div is our individual cards, okay? Which has a lie inside, right? A lie inside. And so in this uh, D, in this D, we can give some class name, class name, and then let's say um, cart, okay, not carts. And we can put him a uh, what class name of carts. So there are carts, but for this one, we can only give cart. All right. So this cart should be uh, like a small uh, square with some rounded uh, borders, right? So let's uh, go ahead and then design that part. I will split the CSS to have better visualization. Now, what should we do so that cards go next to each other? Uh, we can make this first cards uh, display flex so everyone goes next to each other and then later on we will play with it, okay? Or we can make these cards uh, like uh, uh, what inline block. So they will occupy only whatever their space requires, okay? So let's put here cart, since this is a class name, cart, okay? And make it display um, inline block. And then we, we can fix their uh, width and the height, okay? Width, giving them some uh, 220 pixels. And then the height also 220 pixels would be at least enough at, at the moment height okay and so uh, not only language name we want but we want also what image so we can put here img and then as a source what should i put here can you help me uh, language.img exactly language language that img so it's gonna go to my data uh, from data. It grabs this property, which has such value. Okay, so this value is over here. As a result, it puts this specific, uh, what directory or path. And then from this path, it grabs me JavaScript, for example. Okay, this image, right? So uh, language that image, then we can also make here IMGs uh, not for this I am inside this card, okay? So card um, IMG, card IMG, making its uh, width 100% based on its parent. And parent is card who is 220 uh, pixel. Let's save it and save it. There I go and then check it. Yep, these are all image name, and then uh, what image name, image name, image name, image, but they're not the way we want. So how can we do that? They are separated in two columns, okay? In two columns. So first uh, we can give the size for him, okay? Not to stretch all the way through my uh, screen. Let's give him a fixed size, okay? So we can say that this one is gonna occupy only uh, with of let's say how many like 20% of my screen and give a border to see where it is located now. Later on we will remove border one pixel solid. Now let's say black. Save it. Okay. So carts is now occupying 20% of my uh, screen and then with this border Let's have a look. Um, is this cards? It's kind of different. But still card again. It should be cards now. Save. Okay. Yeah. Now it is occupying only 20% of my entire screen. Okay. And now I can put it in the somewhere in the middle of my screen is by putting it here. Margin auto, right? Margin auto. Okay, let me 
make it 100%. Yep. Why it's playing me on the, from left to right? There shouldn't be scroll. Uh, let me stop and run again, how it looks like. Yeah, better. We don't scroll. We can scroll anymore in the horizontal axis. Cool. And even we can, we can make it a little smaller, maybe. Okay. It looks like these are. Um, they are not in the same uh, size, so we can fix with the same size for the image. Rather, giving them what fix it. Um, this uh, this uh, percentage. So let me put here a border initially to see how they are positioned at one pixel, solid blue. Every single card will show us where they are. Okay, over here and here, you see it's even going out. Now, instead of that one, we can make such that they, they will, um, what width and the height is fixed to maybe some like 200 pixels. And then for the height as well, 200 pixels. Yep. And yeah, we will play around later to fix this one as well for the, the width. Looks like it's stretched kinda, but at least they are in the same dimension now. Cool. What we have done is uh, we just mapped and applied the CSS for these uh, individual cards and a plus for the main card that wraps all the cards, okay? Any questions at the moment? What is missing here? The alt from it, uh, attribute and then also key, right? So React uh, has a behavior that every single returned individual element should have their own key Otherwise, later on, if there is a, there happens some change, uh, React will not perform uh, like uh, in an effective way uh, what to update. But based on their unique key, okay, React can easily uh, find out on a specific element to update, and then uh, making the result with the less cost. Okay, so here we can put language. Do we have something to put as a key in our data? We don't have ID, right? If we do not have ID, uh, we can still use the JavaScript because they are all unique. Okay, or we can also use here what index. So here mapping can take another parameter. First one is element, second one is index we can give here. Index means index of every single object. So index of this one is zero, index of this one is one, and then two, three, four, five. So we will use those numbers as a key over here for every single card, okay? Let's save it. And then we won't have any more uh, warnings like every key, a ch every child should have a what? A unique key prop. But if you refresh now, we won't have we won't have that um, warning anymore, okay? So let's remove, and then, and then, okay? So next, alt, we can put as an alt description, again, same, these names, okay? Because in our source, we are using image, but for the alt, we can use the name, save it. Uh, have a look at this code. There is nothing much done at the moment. We just mapped and benefited from the name property as well as the image property. That's it. And let's have a break. So it's like we have uh, images and the names are displayed. Uh, next, we can put next to each other. Okay, so uh, for that one, I think we can increase this size a little bit to put one more item. Okay, 
And this way we end up creating two columns for rows. Um, that is handled over here, not 20 person, maybe like 40. Let's have a look. And even like that's three, maybe 30 at the moment would be enough. Okay, yeah. This is how at least like um, the design looks like. Okay, two rows uh, for, I mean, two columns for rows. So we don't need that much um, large sizes for the image and then the cards. Let's play around and then make a little bit smaller. So instead of card 220, we can come up with and then 200, so just 200, okay. And then for them also 180, uh, 180 and then height is like 160. Let's have a look. Yep, a little smaller at least. And next let's play around with the text, okay. But before that, that one, I would like to see how they look like. Okay, first comes image and then text, right? First comes image and then text. Let's go ahead and then not just replace the orders then. First image and then comes, oops, what's going on? So first image and then text. And inside LI, we have this, uh, what content? Save it. Yep. Cool. And uh, the, the UI also still showing us a little like way smaller sizes for the cards. You can go ahead and then make it also a little smaller. So in that case, 200 is like 140 even. Okay, 140 and then this 120. Uh, like even 110 and then it's 90, Let's see. Okay, cool. And we need a game back to 20%. All right. So, so regarding the, uh, the data display, uh, we are like, like pretty much done except the functionality, okay? So the only thing is left is when we click, so we should be able to show uh, what the, the, the properties or the, uh, the other data property, which is options, okay? So when we click back again, should be able to show um, this um, image itself. So, all right, let me remove these uh, borders. So I'm gonna want any more, but make some other different CSS. So it's supposed to be everything is a rounded border, right? And then separated with some margin. Let's apply it, um, border uh, radius is some around like 20 pixels. And the margin from all sides, um, like let's put here five pixels, and we will see how it ends up in our design. Okay, and of, uh, and then we can give a background. So like, well, let me pick this background if we can. Color font picker or color picker. Color Zilla, and then. Uh, color picker, not from here, from page. Can we pick this one? Looks like they work. Oh yeah, it worked, I think. And we can give here a background color and then, yep, this looks like our background color, save it. Let's have a look now. Yep, all of have has the same almost a background is expected. Okay. And yeah, still we can put some margin uh, from the right side, okay? They split them uh, a little in a more organized way. So margin, so and then top left, you can still keep and then the right uh, top bottom and the right left, let's put here maybe 10 pixel. If I put the uh, right left, then it would, 
to separate 20 pixels, right? We don't want that much. Um, like seven would be better. Yeah, yeah, based on the space also, we don't have enough space, even if you put margin, but that one is enough. Okay. And we can somehow put this image in the center of every single card. Okay. So image and then uh, this JavaScript went to the middle. So that's inside what we're still same here. So we can do like this, right? Display uh, flex. Actually, this is in line block. Oh, it says in line block. Okay, we don't need this in line block anymore. And we can make a display flex. And and then what? Then align items center, and then justify content center center. Okay, let's save it. Okay. So now, um, what it did is, let me check the border one more time where it is located. Save. It's here. What if I increase this size a little bit, 25? So we don't have, um, thirty pixels, yeah won't work so how can we put the one that that can come to next to is we can also make this cards display flex right display flex um display flex so this way uh yeah cards um, located next to each other okay so with I can increase a little bit. Let's have a look. This is okay, whatever inside. So we have what? Oh, that one, uh, that's a UL. Okay, that's a UL. Let me check where this UL is located quickly. Um, style, style and border on pixel solid red. Okay, this is our UL. Mm -hmm. Even though we make it display flex, this UL is single, uh, what single element. So we don't need this display flex for the cards, but we need display flex for the UL then. So let's put class name and then list um, of cards and using this one you can apply this display flex list of cards and then display flex so what it does we will check it it put everything on the same line and of course this is kind of um not necessary we can remove you well okay let me remove completely you well and then make it not a lie but just a p okay that way it would be better now just a p okay paragraph yep and then i can get this flex inside my cards save it and save it Okay, and um, this is a flex. Okay, so cards are display flex, which puts um, every card next to each other. And how can I send it down? Interesting. Um, And this one is also flex, why? Okay, because inside I have some items that should be centered, basically. Okay, border display, this one is flexed, which puts these items um, next to each other, but since we have only limited, okay. 
um, what was that property? I got it. I can put here um, uh, wrap or display. Okay. Actually, we can also use the bootstrap, but uh, we haven't installed that bootstrap is, let's say display uh, wrap items. Let's write a flex wrap. Okay, flex wrap. Um, yeah, flex wrap. Let's use this wrap. What about Instead. grid? Um, grid, also possible, yeah. But let's try this one. Flex wrap and then wrap. Save it. Yeah, we have now. And I don't want this 25 and the one is enough. Okay. Um, yeah, this is uh, now uh, centered, but they are in, uh, well, uh, they are not in column. So in this case, I have to make it flex direction column. Otherwise they are in the row direction, okay? And now they are all in the center. And even we can give some margin from top for these images. Where is that image? Is over here, margin top by 10 pixels. Let's have a look. Worse, yep, now it's way centered, okay? And, of course, for him also, we can uh, apply what the line items um, center. And uh, not the line items, maybe the justify content. Justify content instead of the line items. Yep, they are in the middle. Okay, and let's remove this border. We don't want any more. Save it. Yeah, now they are way organized. So what we did actually is this one is uh, display flex and then uh, with specific size. And then inside is all again display flex with some uh, what uh, given size. Um, when we don't have enough space, we can uh, send, the, send, the, send the items down with this wrap uh, property in CSS. Okay. And Inside the cart, we put we put everything in the middle, and then um, making the flex. Yeah, with this align items justify content gets affected, and flex di uh, direction is a column, so they are on top of each other, which is image and then paragraph. Otherwise, when you make uh, flex, they take not on top of each other. Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm. Not interested in CSS, okay, but much more interested in the logic of this app. Uh, yeah, this one, all this one also is enough. So what else is still missing? Um, we can stretch maybe the width of these cards a little bit, okay? So they have like, uh, looks like longer width than the height. So let's try to give longer width then. That one is here, right? So we can put it 160. Yeah. And even like more 180. Save it. Yeah. Since we don't have enough space and then it's wrapped down, we can make it 25 from now on. Yeah. It's better, looks like. Okay. Cool. And. Yeah, UI is uh, done. Mm, if you have questions, please feel free. If you want me to share the CSS also, let me know. So here uh, we have app and then CSS, that's it. We don't need that data at the moment and CSS I can close. Awesome. So according to the UI, what we have is this uh, carts um, wrapper is also a kind of what element that has some background, okay? So do we have this background image in our image? Let me check it from the assets. If we can use that one, uh, that's 
No, not that one. Working remotely is that one. Not programming languages. Not React. Not that one. Not sure where this background is coming from. Maybe it's first what static image or at blue and then orange. Helpers, card, assets, what about helpers? No, we don't. Okay, let me check inside the data. HTML, there's no. Okay, we can just give him an orange color for the background, okay, for of these um, cards. So we have also text at the top, right? Well, where we can put that one is before mapping, right here, okay, before mapping. So that one is probably, let's say, that H4, and saying that here, language, just languages, okay? So that's gonna be all the time, fix it. So this, since this is a cards and that's a flex, so we also have to make such that it is uh, what uh, flex direction in a column way. Save it and save. Yeah, language and Interesting, what a why it did send me down. Let me remove this one, then it would be here, but which I don't want. Okay, I can actually wrap it with D first and then put inside this language. Okay, and then fire this flex direction again. Save it. So it should be better. Interesting. So when it's it says column, mm -hmm. all right. Got it. So we can wrap these all items again with the one div um, here. Okay. So here. And then that way they would be separated. But this one, one div, and this one, another div. And those divs are cards. But, but now what I would like to do is uh, we can take this card out. Let me try to take and put here, save it. Mm, they are over, overlapped on top of, but why we are complicating? When I just put here language, it didn't go the way I want. Rather, it sent me down, right? And save. Yeah. So this is separate element it should be at the top inside cards. So cards is not column that's why showing us this issue and simply if you put column it's gonna make everyone interesting why these are separated when I just do it column Language, you can save it. Well, these are now going down. If I don't wrap, still same, right? So wrap doesn't work at the moment. And then flex, what if 30%, still same. Uh, so yeah. Just a CSS, nothing with React at the moment. Just a CSS, okay? Language should be at the top, and then we should have these two columns. How about if you leave the wrap and comment out the flex direction column? Say it again. If you like, uh, bring back the wrap. But you you just uh, comment out the column 
the flat version problem. Yeah, that in that case, uh, this one will be treated as one element, and mm -hmm. it it what goes next? I mean, before this first card, and then just takes a uh, like not uh, the, from not the place where we want. You see. And then if you, how about if you put a div around languages? Now? Yeah, that was a. That's what I was also thinking, but it didn't also work. You see, same. Oh. Yeah. So when you make a column direction, uh, flux direction, so it would be on the top, and then this would be at the bottom. But if I wrap this one with div, interestingly, it is destroying everything. But this is another div, and inside we have many cards. Okay, now if I make it column, it works this way, but how about this one? Okay. For this um for this one. Cart. This one card, let me, interesting one. Yeah, this is a like second diff, which, which holds all the cards. And take this, put here what it does. Save it. That's really weird now. Um, okay, that's card and who's got it. Okay, shouldn't be this way now. Yeah, that will damage, but for him, we can also give another maybe. Let me check it where it is located and then we'll work it. Style, border, one pixel. One pixel, solid, red. Save it. Right here, and why it's not going to, to next to JavaScript is because, got it, okay. So we can make it now, this one also display. Flex, save. And, all those functionalities um, like flex wrap, wrap. Okay, so it sends down. Yeah, it's better to give him a class name and apply some rules in different CSS. So, class name, uh, let's say cart wrapper card wrapper and quickly i'll do here that card wrapper is gonna be basically same like him okay but without this one uh margin auto do we need margin auto maybe like wrap okay save it and save it column and just five center. Let me bring some border of how it looks like. Save, margin auto, flex, and remove this, save. Okay. Yeah, you spent too much on CSS which I really don't like. Okay, now that's what I'm trying to put here in the center and why it's sending down me. Um, interesting. Sending down, okay, let's increase this space then, 30. Go on, save it. 
If I don't do this. All right, got it. Okay, now we can give him a width quickly. So width is, um, width is not 20, uh, 100, but okay, 90% of its parent and margin auto. It should work now. Okay, it's in the middle now. Uh, let me remove that border. Remove. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Finally, we come up with. Um, but, but, but how about this one? Is. So flex direct. Oh, okay. We don't want flex direct. I want only justify content again. Okay. Now it works. Definitely works. Um, so auto, okay. And then. Let me put here, justify content, center safe. All right, now everything is in the middle and removing this one should work. Oh, finally, and language in the middle. We can put here another class name for the title. Okay, save and title. Um, title would be so if you want it in the middle, okay, uh, margin uh, auto and also a width of 90%. But 90% wouldn't still put in the middle, so we can make it, um, okay, text align center save. Okay. Now it worked and not H4, but H2. Save. Okay, let me share this code, which took too much time. And share over the chat. Okay, share over the chat, class chat. Uh, class chat, okay. Yep, earlier. So control A, control C, and I will go put here our app CSS. I mean app JS. Take this one and app CSS also. Play control C and take this one. So make sure you're all running the same uh, code. Maybe you may have different uh, CSS, but as long as you have the same UI, that's okay. Now, uh, we what we can do for the title is, uh, yeah, title is done. How about these uh, names? We can make them, that's a P, right? We can make them also like inline st styling, uh, saying that text uh, weight, Okay, text weight, right? A oh, font weight, sorry, not text weight. Font weight. Um, font weight, which is bold, let's say. So this is kind of inline styling. Everything is bold now. Okay. Yeah, so. Let me check the UI now. Um, looks like it has some padding. Okay, let's give that padding also for the cards. It's here, padding like 10 pixels should be enough. Yeah, and background is which is orange, right? We said background orange, background color orange. And text for this uh, title would be white. And then what was that color, right? Not column, uh, color white, safe. Yeah, yeah, background, uh, maybe too much orange, but at least uh, resembles and then title or uh, white. Now we can also justify a little bit that orange color to brighter one, not that too much 
save. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, much of the time we invested on CSS, but uh, let me know if you have questions regarding the React part. Okay, important thing is React part. So what we did is uh, we wrapped everything with the cards. Uh, div inside it has only two elements. Okay, this cards has only two elements. One of them is a title div. The other one is card wrapper div. Okay, card wrapper div. That's it. But card wrapper div is someone that wraps uh, multiple elements. How many? Uh, as many as the length of our categories. So there are eight objects inside categories. We basically started mapping. Okay, and every time it, during every cycle of the loop of this higher order function, we are returning another diff, which wraps two more elements inside image and then paragraph. Okay, and during the mapping so using this language, uh, what iterator we can grab uh, the information from every single object. So every time when we uh, map, it looks something like this. Okay. Initially, we are in the first object, which has the name of, say that JavaScript, okay? And then image, again, JavaScript alias. And then what was that? Options, okay? And options is this one, but we haven't used that options yet, okay? And in the second cycle, it uh, brings me, uh, what was that? Let's say PHP and then name for the image PHP. In the set third cycle, same way it brings this object, Python, image for Python, and so on, so on, okay? And every time we, what, uh, assign for this object a variable name, which is language. The language, okay, this is the variable name for uh, the objects when we loop every time. And using the language, something like this, language and here that name we can grab this javascript right and again language that name we can grab php and for him also and at the same time if you put here uh, language dot img we will grab the javascript okay which is uh, the image that's coming from categories data. And same here, language.img, which refers to uh, what PHP, and as a result, it brings us uh, the image for the PHP. And then we're basically using this language, language.image um, inside image, uh, element of uh, HTML and then language that name language that name we are using inside the paragraph of this HTML element. Okay, that makes sense. How things are mapped. Yeah. Save it. Now, um, next functionality. Let's have a look. Uh, we can uh, pause the CSS at the moment. Uh, let's work with this click, okay? So when we click, we should be able to get their individual, what? Uh, individual um, contents. So how can we do that one? So later on, we will split it into different uh, components. And that way we will send some data over the components and then be able to uh, make this app very clean and then what uh, like smaller and readable um, main component, okay? But uh, right now we can do everything on the same page. All right, and so here is the mapping. Cool. So it means that when we click this one, okay, which one? This. So uh, we can also show their what their um, contents, right? Based on the, some logic. So what should I do is I can attach here event listener, which is on click, right? So let's say that um, handle click, 
okay handle click um what it does is basically we can put here that function constant handle click and then uh write an arrow function c and let's check if any card is clicked or not console log okay how can i for example test whether the first card is clicked is by sending let's say here index right if i send him index uh by writing a, a what uh arrow function inside uh, self-invoked function and then putting here index so i can send him the index of that clicked a cart okay and then using here that index i will check if that cart is correctly clicked makes sense look at this on click i'm firing this function but at the same time, I'm handing him, hey, take this index. I can use inside this function. Okay, so I will also be able to use this one. When I click, let's say, the JavaScript first uh, card, it will send me the index of that JavaScript, which is zero in my data, right? In my categories file, in my categories file, JavaScript's index is, I mean, the, the first uh objects index is zero okay i'll send him zero and then zero so we should be able to see here zero right save it let's have a look and then inspect that one let's inspect console so if i click here it says okay zero is clicked look at this if i click here one is clicked two is clicked three four five six seven okay so this is six and then the seven yeah there are seven indexes starting from zero all right uh it means that the cards are now clickable okay even if you click on image or on uh, any side of this card we will receive some response in that case instead of showing this uh content what we can do is we can show uh, something uh, what we can so show um, the options right options let me remove this one so how can we come up for that options any ideas do you have so when we click we should be able to uh, show only options Okay, see how options look like? It's an array of objects, right? I mean, array of strings. If you wanna show all of them, what is the technique to display them? Looks like it's an array of strings, right? What would be the solution to show array of strings in the React is mapping again. Make sense? Can you map them in like a list format? Yeah, like a list oh. format, yep. Instead of this image and paragraph, we will uh, map the options. When this one is clicked, okay, uh, based on some logic, yeah, instead of showing these two elements, we will uh, what map over here options. So in that case, we will do something like this language. Okay, that's the iterator. Look at this language. Um, dot what options dot map again one more time mapping. Okay, and then let's say text and show us text for example at the moment. Just see that's enough text. Okay, so let's see if every element is associated with this text. Uh, initially like without any click even okay in our console we should be able to see that uh there are eight cards plus like a, a, you know eight different text so refresh you see website 1995 brandon eight is for javascript and then the web development 993 tim burners for html and so on and so on okay um, so there are like uh, how many maybe 24 if every 
um, object has at least three strings inside options. There are 24 lines at the moment, okay? So during uh, the showing of this card, we are going inside the loop one more time to grab this option text uh, one by one, okay? So what would be the like uh, loop structure in this case? So this is the upper loop. Okay, think about this as four and some loop. And then this is gonna be my inner loop, okay? So as a result, we, we are ending up with nested loop here. Okay, so, so this upper loop and then this is inner loop. So the upper loop, is what responsible for showing this image MP and an inner loop is grabbing every single object one by one during this uh, this image and P show up. Okay, but but our um, goal is not to show uh, all of them at the same time, but uh, based on the click, either to show this one or this one. Okay, say that we don't want this one, then it's simply possible now, instead of console, we can put here, let's say, uh, what again? Um, uh, yeah, P and then uh, paragraph and text, that's enough, right? But if, of course, this is wrapped with um, uh, what? Curly brace text is enough because we don't have any object inside. Uh, the moment we put here an iterator, which is a parameter, is someone who can grab these individual strings. So we can use that one directly. So in this case, guys, look at this. What happens is we won't be able to see image, but we will see the text for each card, okay? So I started creating one card, but as a content for that card, I'll end up creating three lines of text. And then next time I will create another card. Inside that card, there's gonna be another three lines of text. Next loop, I will create one card, but inside I will have three lines of text in it again. Let's see, you see website 995, website and then a different, different, different text for, for each. So this should be toggled between the click, uh, I mean, uh, based on the click, uh, between that image or this text. Okay. Cool. Yeah, let's have a look at this uh, code and uh, break time. And after break, we'll continue. Right. So I'll try to practice one uh, just by commenting out and see uh, how it treats um, under this occasion. Okay. So let's have a break. Uh, so, so we can show either um, text options or image with the language name. So let's open this one, but this would be decided based on some logic, okay? And see if we still have, we do have, okay? Only image and then text. Now, um, what if we do something like this? Say that um, if we have a what state, okay, const, um, let's say um, array index, okay, set array index. And here we have some numbers in, inside use state, okay? So use state, as we mentioned earlier, is a state management hooks in a React where it returns function and a variable. The variable is just a what, uh, any data type. And then function is someone who can update this uh, what variable, right? So that's why that can be handled using new state. And inside a default array, we can put here, let's say zero, four, seven. So what does it mean now? So when we, let's say during the mapping, we can check here uh, inside, for example, uh, map, okay? Inside the map, what we can do is say that um, let, okay, 
um, exists or not. And then from our array index, this is an array. And then we will check includes, includes, for example, uh, zero, okay? What will it return? It returns true, right? Why? Because we do have zero here. Do we have? We do have, okay. If this one returns true, it means that uh, I have clicked that card, okay? But if I check, let's say uh, two, do we have two? We don't have, it returns false. It means that I haven't clicked that card yet. So it, will, it just shows image and then paragraph, okay? So when I click, let's say card number seven, whose index is six, so I will add here six. And then next time when I am mapping, so how do I map is, okay, the moment state is changed, I will re-render my page. And during re-rendering, okay, I will check that six, if that one is included in my, uh, what? In my array, array index. So as a result, it returns me true, true. And then based on this result, I will show this one, okay? Okay, let's do that one. And in this case, based on this, I'll end up showing either language map or the images, okay? So here, I'll go put on the this logic. So it should also be wrapped with uh, what kind of React fragment. I'll also explain this one, no worries. So let me put here, save. So look at this now, guys. Uh, if I put here specifically six, what it happens is I have six here. And then this one returns true during the mapping and exists or not becomes true. Okay, if it's true, I will map its, its own what? Um, uh, its own options, text options, okay? Uh, and then if I, what? If I don't have, let's say, specific index in my array index, and then this one returns false, I will only show up this one, not this language options, okay? So let's double check it if uh, the logic works well here. Now I'm checking six, is that occurs here? We do have, and then true, uh, we'll return here true, but it's gonna show for everyone true here. I mean, for everyone it shows the text, okay? We have to make it for only specific uh, card clicks, not for all at the moment, okay? Let's save it, it's gonna show the text because this one is returning exists or not, okay? So use state is not definite, why? Because we haven't imported the React yet. Let's import, import use state from React, save it, okay? So it's gonna show all the text, why? Because we have six here and we are specifically checking the six a six where uh, is what exists in this text or not, okay? If six exists or not. So uh, if we just remove the six, it means that it's not, let's say clicked and it returns false. When it returns false, it goes to this way, image and then paragraph, okay? You see image and paragraph all shown. So now we kind of generalized, but we have to make such that it is uh, what uh, showing only when we click particular um, card. So when we click, okay, let's send the index and then we will create an array of indexes. Okay, so initially it's gonna be empty. So when we click, again, it's gonna be empty. Let's make it such that set array index, set array index, okay, we'll get what? this incoming index, we'll get incoming index. And then uh, we can also store this somewhere else, okay, somewhere else individually. So const say that um, clicked, clicked 
cart index and then let's say that set clicked cart index and equal to use state and it's gonna be initially nothing but it would be updated with this one so index so what why, why do i need to use this one this clicked cart index is for checking here okay which one is clicked recently and every time this clicked cart is updated for example if i click the cart seven okay next time this becomes uh, seven here okay if i click one next time it becomes one but this one array index is and someone who holds me all the cart indexes clicked so far not only one element okay not only one element but all the clicked cards however this clicked card index holds only the currently clicked one okay so when i click this one okay this clicked card becomes the one i clicked and then i will check it do i have that clicked card index in my array if i do have okay it means that this one returns true and based on that true i will either show this one or show this one okay so in that case that case um so anyway this is gonna show everything how we can come up such that it shows only one card so includes returns true if we have it's gonna show everything again in a way i mean for all okay exist or not which is true okay and we'll click that sends the index over here okay but the problem is even though we have only one index, it's going to show for all these language options. Okay, that would be the issue. How we can make only that it shows for clicked card. Okay, here we will check, for example, if that one is equal, I mean, or if that one exists. all right yeah looks like we're gonna check um that logic so when we click okay Yeah, there are multiple ways but i chose another option another way so let's test anyway this one so if we click everyone will be now replaced you see because of what this one holds number uh, zero and then that zero is also here okay like this and then this one has zero here and when i check that if this clicked cart index which is zero is inside my array yes this one returns true if that's true okay i will show for all okay not only for that cart yeah okay so uh if we have like one two three how can we make such that it shows only the contents of cards of one to three not all index okay if this is true hmm okay not clicked card looks like i'll check the index got it so do we have index here we do have Mm -hmm. now it works got it 
You see, so let's refresh this one and then run again. So let me remove this. Got it, we don't need this. Yeah, this way it's more simpler now. Okay, so uh, look at this. When we click, okay, we store one index inside array. So let's say the first card is clicked. Okay, nothing is uh, that click card index. What is that? Okay, this one is not necessary at the moment anymore. Uh, yeah, we, we simplified way uh, better now. Look at this. So when we click, okay, we will send the index and then uh, let's say first card and it uh, stores the first index of first card. It's going to be zero. And since the state is updated, I will re-render my page. And during the rendering, rendering, I will check, hey, do you have this index in your... If so, okay, what it does is it just shows this part. And the next cycle, the index becomes one. Do you have this in your array? No, okay, then go show this one. In the next cycle, the index becomes four, uh, three. Do you have inside the array? No, okay, just show them image P. Okay, yeah, this one perfectly works now. So let me remove this and then make it such that it shows the JavaScript, you see? But it works only four. What if we click like multiple, like Python and Java, PHP, they all should also be shown up here. You see, it shows only one at the moment, yeah? Why? Because we are not storing the array of indexes here. We are just updating the array. So how can we store is if there are like previously uh, stored arrays, so we will spread first and then add here index, okay? So array of indexes are spread at first and then I'll add a new index, okay? This is something like this. Say that you have a variable that array um, equal to, let's say one, and so on. And if you want to add one more on top of this, what you would do is first you will spread all and then add here, let's say something in the new, okay? As a result, what it becomes is, this one becomes something like this, right? Um, two, two, four, 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 and then 10, okay? So the same way we are doing, we are first, bringing everything previous to stored plus a new index, okay? Plus a new index. So this way, uh, it keeps track all the clicked um, cards by showing their text options. So now let's have a look. JavaScript will be shown, HTML will be shown, CSS, C++, Java, Go, and the Python, okay? But what if we click again? What if we click again? So if we click again, it means we have to remove the index of clicked from our array indexes, okay? So look at this now, console.log um, array index. It has, you know, uh, index of all clicked image now. So you will see all clicked image. Look at this, array 10. Like even more, okay? So it means that, let me refresh. Look at this, it's initially empty, but if I click, it has now zero. If I click, now one, click three. But if I click this Python again, we have to remove this three, okay? As a result, when we remove, it shows back the image. Why? Because uh, that one fails in this case, and when it becomes false, it shows our us image and the paragraph. Okay, so we have to remove when we click this Python back. But instead, we are well, what we keep adding, right? Another three like this, you see, which is not a good way. So we have to remove if that one exists in our array already. So here, what we can do when we click, we will go and then check it. Um, if index um, array index. Okay, that includes this index. Uh, if that one doesn't include, okay, we will create. Okay, but it, if that one includes, what we will do is we have to remove it. How we can remove is, uh, so let's create an array first. Say let a new array 
and equal to that's going to be that 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 that's that 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 array of index okay so we will splice that particular one like this new array dot splice so what we, we would like to splice is whatever is at this index how many only one okay and then we will provide the set new array a new updated array like this okay so i'll explain one more time step by step so let's see that how it works so when we click we are sending index and then we don't have that index in our array okay we will create and then put here let's say that the card number six is clicked whose index is five and the next time we click the card number eight whose index is seven it means that the card five and then card seven is displayed with their option text and next time i click the five again and it looks like yeah we do have already okay i'll jump into l statement what i do is i will remove it from my array okay so say that array used to be something like this um, five seven but after slicing after slicing the array has become only seven and now since it is only seven and then i'll during my re-rendering, what it does is looks like we don't have five anymore. Okay, I'll show the image and P again back. Okay, that's how it works. Let me remove this, save it, and clear it. Look at this. Okay, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Python. If I click this one again, we end up removing. Okay, so looks like uh, that index is uh, just uh, what missed miss targeted so we have to check it what we are actually removing so when we click that oh, you first have one, used eight seven there so that's why it's oh <laughs> okay, <laughs> save it yep let's remove that one so when we click again the incoming index is zero okay from that zero we will re remove that item okay so let's see it. click click and then click again yeah, it's just showing back because we are removing it. Uh, but when we click this one, it removes this Python. Why? Because there is a big problem. The, you know, the uh, uh, elements are shifted to the left. Yeah, that's why, that's why it really uh, didn't work. For example, you can show, but this one, yeah, just confused. The arrays is shifted to the left when we slice, splice. How can we solve it when we click? Can you use remove. filter? Yeah, actually, filter would be way better. Exactly. So let's try to use filter rather than right removing. How we can do is um, so say that um, yeah. So we can new array. What we're gonna do is we will filter out all, but except the one that's equal to index, right? So let's say um, new array becomes array index dot filter i everything will be filtered out but now that is not equal to um, index okay and that coming index but this way what it does is um, what it does so let's say used to be we have three two and five when we click three again. So we will have only two, five. So when we click two again, we will have only five. Okay, so let's see now, save it. Okay, refresh. Okay, I have to remove this one, save it. So initially it's completely empty. We don't have anything, So JavaScript, HTML and then JavaScript back, HTML back. Okay, again, everything is in a perfect harmony. Yep. So let me explain why I did follow this rule. Okay, there could be like a bunch of different approaches, but this is one of them. You may come up with uh, something different. It's okay, but let me explain how it works actually. I will remove this. And let me keep this array index to see how the things are working. All right. Um, the important thing is to understand 
okay, there is a state change and React goes to the return and re-renders the page every time when there is a state change, okay? What happened initially? Initially, React did this language at the top and then mapped everything. Why? During this uh, mapping, index generates some numbers, right? Like zero, one, two, three. Okay, during the first loop of this upper loop, upper map, we will have index equal to zero. So index initial equal to zero. And here we have a very simple logic. Hey, um, do you have this index zero inside array index? And in the array index looks like a completely empty, right? It means that this one becomes false, right? Okay, if it's false, this place becomes false. If it's false, I will go to the next statement. Means that I will just show uh, the image and then uh, paragraph. And the next loop started where index becomes one. And then I'll check again here. Hey, do we have one in array index? It says no. If it's no, it shows image and P again. And next loop, image becomes two and so on and so on and so on and so on. One day it became eight, not eight, seven, let's say seven. And then it checks again. Hey, do you have seven inside array index? We don't have anything because it's simply completely. Okay, since this is false, because we don't have anything, it's false. Okay, if it's false, I will show just image and the paragraph. Okay, so here we, have, we can put just index initially and let's see everything is in their uh, correct order. Image and paragraph, image and paragraph. So now what happens when we click? This is the way how we send information to the function during the click. So we can send here some stat static data, data as well. Okay, like, hello. We can send here other kinds of objects. Okay, something like this, let's say name, and then let's say Jack, okay, when we click. And that click becomes index, okay? And that index is at the moment object with the name and Jack, okay? But instead we wanna send here Index, what is index? When we click, it has its own, what? Index, right? So when you click, okay, let's say third car, it means that it sends you the number two. Okay, number two is here. And then I'll check, hey, array index, which is state. Do you have number two? And it says, no. Uh, no. What it becomes is false right, false, but that negation makes it true. So this place becomes true then, saying that, okay, I don't have this number two, okay, jump inside here, okay, jump inside here. Let me put it back. So the incoming index is two, and then I don't have that number two in my array index, means that I will create here two. Next time I click card number four, whose index is three, and it checks again, hey, do you have three? It says no. Okay, jump inside and then copy first everything, whatever you have earlier. Okay, it puts two here. And then a new incoming index is three because that's the card number four. Okay, now it became three. Okay. All right. And during that operation, okay, during this operation, it collected first two. And then when the state changed, before clicking the another uh, card, when there is a state change from nothing to two, the React re-renders the page one more time, okay? So there is no change. I don't wanna render again this language. And there is a change in the index, okay? Now, what is the array of index is two. And I will start mapping again. So index initially is zero, and do you have zero in array index? No, okay, just show the image P. And the next loop index becomes one. 
And do you have one in your array index? No, just show an image P. And then index is two in my third loop. And it checks, hey, do you have number two in your array index? Yes. Okay, then in this case, I will show this one, not this one. And then in the third loop, index becomes three. And do you have three in your array index? No, okay, I'll show this one again. In the fourth loop, index becomes four. And do you have, no, okay, I'll show this one, okay. But okay, if I click, let's say another card, what makes it, this one becomes more longer, let's say five. Okay, state is changed again from two to five. React re-renders the page and then starts looping these items again from the beginning one by one. So it starts generating zero first. Do you have zero? No. Okay, I'll show this one. And then do you have one? No, let me show this one. Do you have two? Yes, let's show this option text. And then three. Do you have three? No, show this one. And four and then five. When it becomes five, it checks. Hey, do you have five? Yes, I do. Then I will show this one. And then the next loop, it generates six. Do you have six? No. Okay, let's show this one then. And this way, whatever we clicked so far will be shown up. Okay. So now let's put here this one back and index. And then let's remove this. Save. And see, whatever is clicked, let's say zero. Okay, I think something is messed up. Okay. It is empty, empty, where is this? Language or not, language. Your handle click. Handle click, oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All the time you are sending, yeah. Thank you. Index, yeah, we're gonna send only index. Yeah, look at this now, let's refresh. Yeah, we are sending zero. Okay, since we don't have zero, we put zero. And we started mapping from the beginning. And this one index becomes zero first. Do you have? Yes, I do. Since this is true, okay, I'll show this one. And then second loop, index becomes one. Do you have one? No. Okay, just show this one. Index becomes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All the time this one becomes false, it shows this image and P. Okay, so let's click one more time. C plus plus. Whose index is let's say uh, five? Okay, five has come here, we don't have since. And then I added up here, five next to two. And state has changed, React renders the page again. So during the map, index became zero. Do you have a zero? No. Do you have one? No. Do you have two? Yes. Okay, show then language options. And then index becomes three, four, and then five. Do you have five? Yes. Then show language options, okay? This is how it works. Now, Python, it is added in my array index. And then during the mapping, hey, do you have this index? Yes, okay, show them. Show them, show them, show them, okay? And we have here set of arrays who has been collected so far with six, okay? Zero, five, three, four, six, seven, okay? So because of this array collection, because of this array collection, and during this mapping, uh, because of this uh, result, Boolean result, true or false, I will show either this part or this part. Okay. And how the other way is working, let's, uh, let's uh, remove this one again and click this back. For example, if I click this, my arrow is shrinked. Earlier, I used to have zero here. And if I click, let's say, um, what, let's say this one, right? Whose index is three is shrinked without three anymore. So it means that during the that's re-rendering, it checks again. Index becomes all the time from zero to eight. Hey, do you have three anymore? It says, no, I don't have. It becomes false. Okay, now show back its image in paragraph 10. Okay, and the next loop, checks, hey, do you have, let's say, index seven? I don't have any more. Okay, then show this part. Because this is false, it won't go to the right, but goes to the down. Okay. 
So we can even shrink, shrink up the empty array. Uh, if we keep clicking the others. See, we have only seven now. Why this one is still showing? Because every time the array is changed, it means that state is updated. The state is updated, the page is re-rendered. The page is re-rendered, everything is uh, what uh, built from the beginning. But only the places where there have been changed, of course. So everything has happened building again by checking index uh, from zero to seven every time. Hey, do you have this one? Do you have this one? Do you have? Uh, I don't have, I don't have. Okay, show this, show this, show this. But when index becomes in the last loop, number seven, do you have this one? Yes, I do. Okay, show the language options. That's why we are showing language options. But when I click again, we don't have any more. And pages re-render it again. And index becomes zero, one, two, three, four, seven, six, seven, uh, seven, okay? And every time it returns false, that's why we ended up showing for all of them image paragraph, image paragraph, image paragraph, okay? So how we are making this uh, what uh, empty is with the help of this filter simply. So we are filtering out only the elements that's not uh, whose, uh, you know, uh, value is not equal to index. So let's say that if we have two, three, four, four six, and when we click the three in, uh, the card whose index three again, okay. It means that, okay, we do have, let me jump to L statement. And then what it does is we click three, right? We will end up only the one who is not equal to three. And since these are equal to three, okay, we don't feel, we, do, we will not take this because it returns us false, okay, false. But the rest returns true, that's why we end up uh, having a new array, which looks like two, four, six. And then we will update our state with two, four, six. We re-render the page again. Index is generated again from zero to seven. Hey, do you have zero? Do you have one? Do you have two? Do you have three? And so on and so on. Whoever returns true will be shown with options. Whoever returns for, uh, what uh, false will return image and paragraph. Okay, David. Yeah, that's it. Pretty much the the task is done. See. Um, yeah. Do you know? Do you understand this why, part, guys? Yeah. Go ahead. I don't know why the index uh, splice method didn't work. Yeah, because uh, splice didn't work is. That won't work. It just uh, cuts out system. from that position, which is uh, dangerous. For example, if you have two, three, five, six, seven, okay, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah, it won't work. Why? Because let's say index, incoming index is zero now. And it removes this two, but it should have removed the zero. But we don't, since we don't have zero, but the index coming incoming uh, what the index is uh, zero so let's say that slice uh, and then here let's put this one look at this that slice and then zero one incoming index is zero we clicked zero but we don't have zero here to be removed it but incoming in cart is zero but it removes this two now even the index is zero it removes two if you put here index, index, you see? So when you click, let's say cart number four, and let's say we don't have this one, cart number four, okay, whose index is three, and it removes not this number three, but it removes the index three here, zero, one, two, three, it removes seven here, okay? Not this oh, first guy. Okay. Yeah, that's why. So the slice removes based on the index, but when you have randomly unordered indexes in your array, it really makes what things doesn't work. That's why filter is the best solution. Actually, I use all the time filter. Why the slice came to my mind? I don't. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. 
No, uh, code, please, that's all. Oh, sure, of course, yeah, let's go ahead and then. I can well, do something like this. Let's first split this part into different component first. Okay, split the different component. And then based on that uh, component, I'll share. And let's say that if we still have something that needs to be done, for example, based on the UI we have earlier, uh, we can put on top of this one, this kind of image, uh, and then also some hover over. Let's say that when there is a hover, we can apply what some opacity and then border shadow. Let's quickly do that one. Where, where is that? FCSS. So that is carts, not carts, but carts, right? Okay, when the cart is hovered, that uh, cart hover, uh, what we do is a box shadow, uh, some kind of, let's say, five pixels. Uh, what's that light blue and then opacity we can send it to seven yeah it is actually is it you misspelled the card you need d and then yeah, mom. Card. 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 Exactly. okay and also we can make it what was that the cursor pointer Yep, perfect. Positive, everything is working. And um, remove this. Looks like there's no sh book shadow now. Can make it like two pixels. Didn't change anything. Oops. Safe. Okay. CSS is done. And what else? At the top, um, at the top, we can add uh, one more. Okay. Yeah, you can play around later on. That doesn't a big issue. Like putting here one image. What you're gonna put is um, so you will do something like this. Look at this. You will wrap this one with a huge div, okay? Actually, and then put here. And here is gonna be our image, for example, okay? That would be what? Uh, let's say not React SVG, but color. Yeah, you can also use this color SVG with this SVG, for example. Uh, let me grab and uh, show you how to put that at SVG. Simply um, Yeah, so let's let's import this React SVG. Import React from not let's say React SVG from um, probably images, right? We do have and then we have React SVG. Um, instead of image, we're gonna use React SVG. Let's see how it affects on our. Yep, it's a really huge, huge SVG now. What we can do is simply apply some. Um, yeah, let's wrap here with diff and put inside the image. Now uh, we can make it a little styled. Um, what width of um, like so it may take how many based on this card size we have to decide okay so they are on the same level CSS that cards should be 25 pixels of the its parent. So let's make it also 25%. So let's see, did it change? Style image, um, display, we don't want display. Oh, it didn't go, okay. Um, display inline line. 
inline block. Come on, yeah. Let me don't play with this one. You can do it later, okay? But if you wrap this one with, with a huge div and then uh, letting these cards inside, but at the top another image, that would definitely make things uh, like uh, as UI suggests over here, okay? But you can work it later. That's not a big issue. All right, so next task is quickly, let's uh, split this in different, uh, what in different uh, component. Right, so let's let's uh, put here one name, which is gonna be what? Um, yeah, cards.js, okay, cards.js, and function cards, and name, and then return, and then export default cards. And we're gonna import that cards over here, import cards from cards. Okay, save it. Now we don't have cards, so it's here, which is not uh, correctly configured. We're gonna what? Uh, we will, we will, we will, we will uh, take everything from here, starting from map. Okay, let's grab everything and put here inside. And uh, instead of mapping, we will put a component, okay? Component, save it, yep. Now, you see, nothing is left. Let me remove this one, but okay, you will play around later with this VG. Yeah, and the cards. Now, the problem is this cards doesn't have categories, right? How can we send it? it is by putting here categories equal to what? the categories that's coming from our uh, local files, right? Over here, categories, categories. Now, that one is available in my, what? In my cards now. That's not a problem now, okay? Since it's not a problem, I can map. How can I map is by putting here props. So the props is, look at this, what uh, makes this props uh, work. So if we console that log uh, props, what it shows is it's going to show us an object with the props, and then we have categories. Okay, if we console, it shows an object with a key name of uh, props and then categories. Actually, categories. Sorry, not props. Um, key name of categories, and then we have, we will have array of um, objects, something like this. Okay. If we console these props, does that make sense? Okay, so here, before mapping the categories, we have to put here props that categories, and then we will be able to map this array. Okay, let's remove this one now. All right, so what is still missing? So we have to wrap it with div, mm -hmm. div but when you don't want to confuse with divs, you can put this. Uh, Array From. fragment. Have you heard this one? Yes. Yeah, that's like a empty uh, element that can be used for wrapping um, much, much, much more like bunch of uh, JSX. Okay. So yeah, save it and let's save it. So what's gonna be a problem is we don't have handle click at the moment, which is not sent to this. Function. So you see, there would be huge errors. You see, array index handle clicks are missing. Uh, what we can do is um, every time when we click, when we can also bring these, we can also bring these. Let's bring them. Control X and put right here. Control B. Save it and then save it. Now, handle click is locally accessible from cards. And we are sending here, creating here. Yep, now let's work on it. Save it. 
Okay, use state is not defined. Okay, it looks like we have to import here the React because we are using the React hooks, right? So we can import in different ways. Either we can import React and then from React, but this React I showed that earlier contains bunch of functions inside, right? So console.log, if you just check it to React, there you will end up finding the uh, what? A use state, user tag, and so on, and so on, and so on. Look at this now. Um, console, let me refresh this page. You see, this is the where I am consoling the React, and it has use state down below here. Okay, so use state. So instead of using uh, use state alone, I can also put here React dot use state. Because you see here, use state is under React. When I console this on line number two, okay? On line number two, I'm consoling React. It has a bunch of functions. If I use React that view state, it still works. But I can destructure it simply like this. I use state from React, like directly, and then make it useful without React, okay? It says save it. <clears throat> so for the next, let's say hooks, we will be using like um, use effect, use memo, the same way how we import. Okay. Now let's remove it. Now JavaScript, HTML, Python, CSS, and everything is on there. Perfect. One more. Okay. We ended up sp splitting the components into different. Page, and now our app looks really, really, really clean. Okay, uh, we don't even need this use state here. This is just a functional component without even hooks used. Uh, we can even split this one into different components. Let's take it out. Okay, so I also mentioned earlier that you don't need to import this app CSS in every single component. As long as they are under the main parent, that app CSS will affect for them as well. So let's remove this one also, control X and put here um, what, uh, that's the title.js and constant title, okay, equal to arrow function. Since it's a very simple uh, function, it can just return this one, save it, okay? So we can just put here export default title, okay, save it. And now let's import title here. Import title from title. And we're gonna use this title as a component this way, save it, okay? So you can also do this uh, SVG in other component and we will have way cleaner uh, you know, app. Make sense? So let's see that if we can still split something over here. Um, for instance, uh, these also can be split. Okay, but for example, this one. But okay, yeah, still this this okay. Actually, if it uh, this if this one can be split, also looks better. Okay. So what should we do in that case is, yeah, let's split this one also, okay? So let's split uh, into different child components. So what is that actually uh, is um, content, um, what Co content uh, component, component.js, okay? So we will put here const, um, content component. So you can come up with random names. It's, uh, it doesn't necessarily be the same as file name, component equal to, and yeah, press return, simply here return. And at the moment, nothing is returned. Let's export first, export default, the content component, okay. Save it, and that should be imported inside my cards, right? Import content component from, and then content component. 
saying. Yep. Instead of this one, this return, I mean, inside this one, uh, with that, I will take this out. I will take this out. Control X. I will put here content component. Okay. I'll put content component. Um, what happened for him now? Let me wrap it. Exist or not. Uh, it looks like these are redundant, right? This, which one is redundant? Okay, this is okay. And this is for, okay. Yeah, this one is open. All right, let me remove this. So this is for him, this is for him, and we need one early brace, and then one parenthesis and one more curly brace. Did that work? It didn't work. Uh, when you render uh, the content component, should it have a self-closing uh, tag as well? Like a oh, yeah, of course. Flash? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Of course. All right. Now, um, so uh, we just have to go here and then return whatever we were returning inside content component, right? But here we don't have exist or not. Plus, uh, we don't have handle quit, right? So we will deal with that one. Also, um, what else we don't have? Looks like we don't have even language, right? So, what should we do is we have to send the proper data to him. But first of all, exist or not should be sent here and then exist or not, okay? Second, um, second, okay, exist or not now available. So we're gonna put here props and then we will make it props dot exist or not, okay? Now this is available, but we don't have looks like index accessible. Okay, let's send him index as well, index equal to index okay and now we're gonna put here props.index props.index because we are sending the uh, index as well as a props and props index and here also props.index okay and one more uh, is still missing which is language right so what we're gonna do is um, language becomes equal to this guy, okay, this guy. All right, and then inside here, we're gonna make here props, things or not, and then props.language, and then props.language image, and then uh, props.language name, props.language name. Well, why we did props? Because we are sending objects. Is this language is an uh, object, okay? And this, this is array, and this is an object. So we are sending object. And if we are sending object, it means that we can extract their properties. So options, we want options. We want image, we want name, but with props, okay? Since they are coming from uh, uh, upper component. Now, what is missing is one thing is still missing is handle click is missing, okay? So we can also send that function simply here. Uh, the name handle click like this handle click equal to handle click and here we're gonna write here props that handle click okay now everything is done let's go back and check yep. so the functions also when you send it it's also need props right same as like normal yeah 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 because okay. everything is what uh, is coming as a props. So this props is now, if you want a console, looks like definitely will look like this. Um, props, look at this, I will show here. It's gonna be object and there are many props now. We, if you prop, if you what, if you want to console this one. So there are many objects, something like this. So index with some value every time. And then we will have a handle click function okay which will be something like this f and then we have language 
language, which is definitely object. Okay. So if we use props.index, we will get value for index. If you use props.handle click, we will get function. If you use props.language, we will get this object. And then props.language dot uh, let's say name, we will get the name inside that object. So it will have something like this every time, name, let's say JS, and then IMG is uh, again, let's say JS, and then it will have options of array, okay? So if we type props.language type options, it means that becomes array, which is mappable, okay? So let's save and then have a look at inspection now. Yeah, refresh. You see, um, index, language, handle click. And even we have uh, exist or not, right? So when we click, we will send all one more time, but there should be one of them exist or not is true. Okay. And this one, we will send everything again. The one of the exist or not becomes true. And we'll click the function, you see, it takes index and the language. And there are object again, as I mentioned, object and an options is an array. So there is a problem with what the key child in a, uh, should be, should have key where we are mapping actually. So we, here we can also put another key, okay, key of what? We are getting text, right? Okay, we can put here uh, text as a key because the text is also a unique property. Okay, let's refresh if we have that warning anymore. We still have. I think we don't, we have to go and uh, check from the cards if we are mapping again. All right. Uh, so what we are mapping actually here, component, okay. Let's go to component, what we are returning. Key we have and then key for him we have. Uh, maybe, maybe we can put, we could have put here key, no. Yeah, anyway, so we applied the key for him here, or key for him, so there shouldn't be any problem, but yeah, now it works, okay? Warning is not that big issue, but everything works. So this way we ended up making this one super clean. Title cards, and then cards is also like our list lines of codes, okay? And then we have content uh, component, which is here. It's also split it. Can we split more? Uh, we can split, for example, this part also. Yeah, that can also be put another component. In that case, we have to send here props exist or not, and then props language option we have to send. Okay, props a language would be enough to send for mapping this one. Okay, let me share all of the files with you over the Slack so we can. In real world, like uh, applications, do they use always like a React or Redux, like in order to do, like manipulate all this work? Not use the apps. Like in uh, real world um, applications, do they use React or Redux? more frequently react redux in the real world applications yeah 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 uh i think you were uh from the first class of the react right mm -hmm. yeah as i said earlier the react is like widely used in the in the companies for application building and then redux is something different so it is not a react library it's a javascript library right yeah. yeah, it doesn't. But it's so easy. Idea. I mean, not yeah. easy. It wasn't easy for me. Like, <laughs> but it was like, yeah. yeah it's don't rush with Redux. Don't rush with Redux. Maybe uh, we we may be still like far from Redux, but some applications like may not require Redux at all. You can still complete with. The, okay. Yeah. Just a React. Why you need to implement Redux? So you have to. Yeah, I know that. Like. Uh, 
in Redux, it's easier to manipulate with those. Instead of using props, you can just send us yeah. data mm -hmm. directly. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. From that point, of course, if the application is like... It's, I like it's React different. more. So. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. Like if application is not that really big, even like I gave you an example, like uh, the one that we built in my current company, that has like com components around more than 200, I would say, to be honest. And never used Redux, just the okay. books. Okay. Let me share over the chat now before we wrap up. Uh, yes, so I have to find out all of those. That's here. So you have image, so I would just go here and upload one by one. So we have title, right? And title we have, and then we have what data, and then content, and then we have cart, and then we have app, and then app CSS. Okay. And I can even put image. Actually, you have, yeah. So this way we have app CSS and then app cards, car, content component inside card and then data title. And let me put over the chat. If you just copy and paste, uh, what is that? So image is a type of file not supported by. Okay, let me just remove image because you already have. If you just follow the same uh, rule for the image, like by creating one file and then putting everything inside this image you can easily come up with the solution. Okay. I'm very shared um, images, so. Oh, uh, the, yeah, it's yeah. like a little huge. So on your on top of your uh, React app, let's replace this uh, app JS, app CSS, and then add those content, content component, title JS, uh, course JS, data JS, and you will be able to get the same results. Okay. Of course, you should have um, image uh, folder inside SRC like this, having all of those images inside. Okay. Any questions? No. Yeah. We will do like uh, various types of exercises with React. Um, yeah, only with practice, only with different, uh, you know, approaches, we will gain confidence, we will gain more knowledge regarding React. And I have like uh, really uh, various types of exercises for you for the next upcoming, uh, you know, months. Um, so you will see like great examples, hopefully, even like games, tic-tac-toe, um, like what else? Uh, yeah. All right, guys, see you tomorrow then. That's all for today.